Oh, what's up, guys? Andrew Cruzy here, uh, CEO and founder of Tribe of Buyers. And if you guys don't know me, uh, I, uh, I started a coaching business three years ago. Um, I was $82,000 in student loan debt. I had $600 in my bank account. Um, and now, just three years later, um, I run a multi-million dollar coaching business and uh, have become a millionaire in that time. Uh, so pretty fun stuff, pretty exciting stuff. And today, uh, I'm gonna bring to you the seven rules um, of a seven-figure life. So this is actually only the second time I'm presenting uh, this. So bear with me if I bump through it a little bit, uh, but I'm sure you guys will get a lot out of it. And along the way, I'd love for you to share uh, your biggest takeaway, your biggest insight from these seven rules. Um, this is what uh, I've, I've lived by uh, the past three years to get these results um, in my life. So super excited to share these with you. And we're just going to hop right into it uh, with no wasted time. So these are these seven rules for a seven figure life. Um, the very first rule is everything happens for a reason. So you're watching this uh, Facebook Live for a reason. You booked a strategy session for a reason. You joined that program for a reason. You, you had that conversation for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. We need to listen to what life is trying to tell us. One of my favorite books, The Alchemist, um, I, I've listened to it like 30 times already. Um, and one quote from it is, don't ignore the omens. I'm actually going to get a tattoo of that uh, uh, pretty shortly here. Don't ignore the omens. Because life is always trying to teach us something. It's always trying to tell us something. And when we can slow down and listen to it, the more we'll get out of life. Um, I like there was, there was a period uh, in my life where I quit drinking caffeine for for six months, I went to um, a Buddhist monastery for, for a week and just sat back and listened. Um, and that was a pivotal moment in my life because I went through burnout, I went through breakdown and I just stopped. And when I allowed myself to stop and really listen to what life was trying to tell me, it was telling me I wasn't working my business in the right way. It wasn't conducive to happiness and things needed to change. So I started listening to, okay, Andrew, um, what are your values? Okay, Andrew, what is your vision? I created a whole new vision. I uh, wrote down my values at the Buddhist monastery um, and I started to listen to what life was trying to tell me. Um, and that was a pivotal moment for me because I was doing everything myself. Then I built a team, then I built systems because I realized I needed to have a team around me to get me to my vision and where I wanted to go. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't just sat back and listened to life and realized that all those things in the past happened for a reason and to get me to where I wanted to go. So rule number one is everything happens for a reason. So rule number two, it's less important about what you decide compared to that you decide. Because indecision is what leads to open loops in our brains, which causes us anxiety. So the formula is decide, commit, and that's what equals flow. When we make a decision, we commit to that decision, and we go full force on it, that's when we get in the flow state. When we're left with a choice and we don't decide, that's what causes us anxiety and breakdown and depression. It's about deciding. What is an open loop currently that you're having in your life that you need to make a decision on? Super duper important. It's less about um, what you decide compared to that you decide. Especially in entrepreneurship, failure is a part of, it, of the journey. The more you fail, the more you're going to learn. And if you're not making decisions, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to fail. I failed so much because I've just decided I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Were they all the right decisions? No. 
but I learn from them. So it's less important about what you decide compared to that you decide. So that was rule number two. Rule number three is I master my fate, I'm captain my soul. Or you can say it, uh, you are master of your fate and you're captain of your soul. This is a quote from the poem Invictus uh, that totally changed my life. I read it uh, when I was 24 years old, about uh, uh, three years ago now. Um, and this is when I started changing my life. I, after, uh, shortly after reading the poem, um, I set a goal to lose 20 pounds and to quit drinking in 90 days. And I did it. Uh, it was actually day 70. I was at the YMCA. I was looking down at the scale. I was 20 pounds lighter than I was, uh, just 70 days previously. And in that moment it triggered, holy crap, if I just put my mind to something, put my mind to a goal, I can achieve anything that I want in this life, right? So I master my fate, I'm captain of my soul. That is something that needs to be burned into everyone, that they determine their destiny. You determine your destiny, nobody else, right? So I master my fate, I'm captain of my soul. That's number three. Number four, uh, is make decisions from your vision, not your current circumstances. When we start to make decisions from our vision, we start to achieve our vision. When we uh, continue to make decisions from our current circumstances, we stay stuck, right? Um, and that's because if we're making decisions from a place that uh, we've always made decisions from, we're gonna get the same result. But if we can pull ourselves out of that and make the, it's often the harder, more uncomfortable decisions that are made from your vision. And that's what helps us grow, right? So if you want to grow, you need to have a vision and make decisions from where you're going, not where you're currently at, right? So make decisions from your vision, not your current circumstances. Then number five is seek simplicity, not ease. With simplicity comes ease. Um, as human beings, biologically, we want things to be easy, right? We want things to just come to us, right? Um, we need to fight that biology because when we try to make things easy, they often don't become easy, they become more complicated. But when we seek things to be simple, that's when they become easy. That's when we are able to make a linear process of how to achieve an outcome. And that's when things become easy. We see the data points lining up. Okay, that's the outcome because I've set in my mind, I need to make it simple. I don't need to make it easy. I need to make it simple, right? So when we seek ease, it becomes more complicated. When we seek simplicity, it becomes more easy, kind of counterintuitive. Um, number six, action leads to insight more than insight leads to action. So I used to always be stuck in thinking things needed to be perfect um, and I needed to read that next book and then I'll be able to do it or I need to um, uh, I need to figure something out first before I can fully commit to actually doing it and taking the action, right? It wasn't until I um, set that goal to lose 20 pounds uh, in 90 days and quit drinking where I just started taking action, massive action, didn't need to be perfect, didn't need to know how to count my macros perfectly. Uh, didn't need to uh, know like exactly how to do that, uh, that, that uh, lift at the gym. It was just about going, doing it and taking the action. And through that action, all those data points built up and I could see uh, what was actually occurring. I had more insights because I was actually doing, I was on the field, I was actually playing it, I was doing it. And it's really tough like with all of the limiting beliefs that are just built up inside of us um, to just take the action. But when we do, and when we keep promises to ourselves, 
that's when confidence and momentum builds up and that's when we actually produce the result. So action leads to insight more than insight leads to action. And number seven here, last but not least, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. This is why we surround ourselves with um, amazing people in our lives. Uh, this is why we um, uh, pay coaches. This is why we pay mentors. It's because the principles of what gets us a result are what need to be focused on. It's not about that new tactic. It's not about that new strategy. It's the principles that produce the result. So we need to be reminded of those principles more than being taught that new strategy or that new tactic, right? So we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught, reminded of the principles and taking consistency on those principles, right? So like for our Authority Accelerator clients, it's, hey, uh, have you made a piece of content? Hey, have you reached out to that prospect? Hey yada, yada, yada. We need to be reminded of what's actually going to move the needle and produce the result that we want, right? So those are my seven rules for a seven-figure life. Uh, let me know what your biggest takeaway was either on this uh, video, drop it down below, or uh, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, let me know. Uh, if you want to text me, this is my legitimate number here. Uh, if you want to jam out with me, uh, my number is 619-547-1909. You can just say, hey, what's up, Andrew? Uh, and we can start jamming out. Um, if you have an issue with generating leads, generating clients, creating offers, anything like that, systems, team, anything like that, let me know. I have plenty of free resources to send over to you. Just give me a text at that number. Uh, let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.